What is the meaning of life? That's the question we're discussing here on this bro broadcast at this time each day. And what we have been saying is that part of the meaning of life comes from the fact that it is made by someone for a certain purpose. That is life itself. Life is made by someone for a certain purpose. It hasn't just happened by chance. All the order and design that we see in the fall of the seasons, in the organization of the planets and the stars, all the order that we see in the DNA structure of the molecule, all the order that we see in our own bodies does not come by chance, that it is evidence, as Einstein said, of an intelligent mind behind the universe. And uh, this whole life of ours is made by that intelligent mind. What we have been saying, you remember, is that that intelligent mind showed itself very vitally and very vividly in the first century of our era because a man appeared here on the earth, born of a human mother and uh, of a human father, uh, but different from all other human beings a man who was able to break through the barrier of death and to give us a sense that he was in fact able to pierce beyond space and to come back to this earth after having communed again with the person who made the universe, whom he said was his father. And that is, of course, the man Jesus of Nazareth. And I ask you not to go to sleep and not to say, oh, another old religious broadcast. It's not. What we're trying to do together here day by day is to talk sensibly and plainly and intelligently about life and to share with each other the thoughts that we have so that you might be stimulated to think different thoughts yourself or to work out things for yourself, to work out a philosophy of life. So that's what we're trying to do. And what we've said is that the indications of this man Jesus are that you and I were made to live a life that was in friendship with our Creator. A life that was lived in friendship with our Creator. That is, a life that was lived in conjunction with him or in cooperation with him. That he did not just make you and put you here on earth to make your own way through life as best you could, but that he put you here to fulfill a certain purpose that he had in mind that only you can fulfill. And that he wanted you to fulfill that in conjunction with himself. Now, if you say to me, oh, how can I find out about him? I mean, he's invisible. I've never seen creator. I've never seen God. Well, he feeds thoughts through your thoughts. That's it. He would feed his thoughts through your mind and through a deeper part of you called your spirit if you begin to treat him for real. That's really what it's all about. But of course, if we would do that, then we would have a guidance system in our life that would give us wisdom as to what job we would take, as to how we would do it, as to what, who we would marry, the kinds of things we would do with our family. It, it's not that we would be robots because he wants free will people who will love him freely, but we would have a dear father who cared for us and whose advice would be invaluable to us. And that's the way we were meant to live our lives. Now, of course, we have not lived in that way. You know, from the very beginning of the world, we began to live by our own resources. In fact, you remember we talked about it some time ago. It was pictured by our creator in his explanation of the beginning of the world as two trees. He pictured it that way because he was dealing with our human, human race in its childhood. And so we understood things that way. So he said, look, I've given you a tree of life and a tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life is really me. It's really me and my spirit. And if you walk with me day by day, if you walk with me in the cool of the evening, that's the way it reads, you remember, uh, in the early chapter of Genesis in the Old Testament, that uh, it says in Genesis 3 and verse 8, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And that's the way we were intended to walk through the world, listening to our Creator, maybe in the evenings, just before we go to bed, just pausing a little and thinking, God, you put me here 
what do you want me to do? How, what do you think of me? And really wanting to know. And of course, if we really do, he begins to feed thoughts through our mind that let us know what he thinks of us and what he wants us to do. And that's the way we were meant to live. That's what the tree of life is. In fact, we decided, forget it. We're not going to depend on some invisible creature like that. We want to live our own life. We want to use this world for our own purposes. We want to get what we need from it. And so instead of his love and the provision that that would give us of all the food, shelter, and clothing that we needed, we decided we live off the world itself. And we decided we'll eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's the way it's presented. You remember, it's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. It really, what it means is we'll note what is good to do in this world, what is evil, what is good to do and what is bad to do, what is right to do and what is wrong to do in order to get from the world the food, shelter and clothing, the happiness and the sense of significance that we need in our own lives. And so we began to set down our precedents, our precedents, our business laws, our psychological laws, our human relationship laws, our family laws, and we set up a whole system of what we should do and what we shouldn't do in order to be happy and fulfill ourselves. And we substituted that, our knowledge of good and evil, for a dynamic, intuitive relationship with the creator of the universe. Of course, in doing that, we became perverted creatures because instead of getting from him what we needed and from his love, which included, of course, our food, shelter, and clothing, and our sense of value and importance, and our worth and self-esteem, and our sense of happiness, we decided we live depending on the world for these things. And we'll substitute for these things that we thought we needed, we'll substitute what the world can give us. What we needed was not those things. We needed the love that lived, lay behind, behind those things. But, of course, we didn't realize that. And so we turned and we tried to get from things the security that God's own love alone could provide for us. We turned to circumstances and we tried to get from them the happiness that a love relationship with the infinite being behind the universe alone could produce. We began to depend on people for the sense of value and self-esteem and worth that the love of the infinite, one significant other in the universe alone could provide. And in doing that, we became perverted personalities. Instead of living from a quiet, restful center that we had in the heart of our beings because of our relationship with him, we began to live from the outside in, trying to get from the world what we were meant to get from the creator of the world. And in fact, it's put in those terms, in the early chapters of Genesis, you remember in Genesis 3, which tells of the fall of mankind, which is just the fall of man from this close relationship with God. The verse runs like this in Genesis 3 and verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, was good for food, that is, that by using the knowledge of good and evil that was built up by human beings over the years, she would be able to get what she needed for food and for clothing and for shelter. And that it was a delight to the eyes when she saw that by using a knowledge of good and evil, by using this chemical substance called heroin in this way, I can get delight for my eyes, I can get happiness. I can begin to get exhilaration if I use the ski slopes in Nevada or the ski slopes in Switzerland this way. I'll get this kind of excitement and exhilaration from them. It would be a delight to the eyes. And that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. If I begin to use the accumulated human wisdom that is built up over the years of how to manipulate things for my own success, then I can become significant and important and can gain self-esteem in other people's eyes. And so that's the way we began to live, trying to get significance and security and happiness from the world of things and circumstances and people instead of from our love relationship with the Creator who is our Father. In doing so, we became infinitely perverted personalities. And it's those personalities that you and I now live with. Let's talk a little tomorrow about some of the consequences of that for us in our everyday lives.